Hey, Tommy from The Run Testers. In this video, we are going to be doing our full review of the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Let's have a look at it. The Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2 costs £210 or $250. It weighs 214 grams or 7.5 ounces for men in the size 8 and the drop is 1.5 millimetres. The Wave Rebellion Pro 2 is a race shoe that Mizuno says is designed for elite level runners aiming to get a sub 2.5 hour marathon time. Like the Wave Rebellion Pro, it features one of the most noticeable shapes to be found in super shoes, with the bulk of the midsole foam positioned in the centre of the shoe. That midsole is dual layered, with the lower layer being the more responsive Mizuno Energy Lite, and the upper the softer, bouncy Mizuno Energy Lite Plus, of which there has been more added than in the previous version. Other updates include a redesigned carbon fibre wave plate to improve speed, a slightly wider base to increase stability, and the shoe gets rid of the cutout midsole section seen in the original. The upper has also been modified to make it slightly roomier, and there's an impressive layer of G3 outsole rubber for grip and durability. So fit for me in the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2 was all good in my normal running shoe size. It is quite a tight fitting shoe, I will say that. I have quite a narrow foot and I'm on the smaller end of my size, so it works very well for me. Found it a fairly similar fit to the original Wave Rebellion Pro, maybe slightly roomier in the toe box, but all round it was good. It had a nice dialed in feel for running fast and a good hold around the heel and midfoot. So yeah, I was fine in my normal running shoe size. So I'm a size eight in the UK, this is a size eight. I didn't have any problems with it. Um, Apart from, it's a little bit hard to get a lockdown fit. The heel isn't very structured in this shoe, so it does feel a little bit looser than um, the original uh, Wave Rebellion Pro. Um, as a result, it's a bit trickier to, to get a nice, secure fit in it. Once you've got that, it's exactly it's, it's absolutely fine for me. I didn't have a problem with it. Um, the front of the shoe is slightly longer than the Wave Rebellion Pro 1, um, and it's a, it feels a little bit wider as well. Um, but uh, because of the way that the shoe tapers, uh, some people have mentioned that it can feel a little bit small on the foot. So if you uh, do have slightly wider feet, you may have an issue with that and may need to size up half size. I haven't had a problem with this. I've done about 70K in this shoe so far and I've had no pain. I found it to be a very comfortable shoe. Once you get that locked down fit sorted. Um, but other than that, I would stick to my size in, in this based on my average width foot. So as I mentioned, I have done about 70K in this shoe and I've used it for quite a lot. So I've used it for a few interval sessions. I've used it for easy runs. I've used it for recovery runs. I've used it for a half marathon race. Um, and I've used it for a couple of park runs as well. And what I would say about it is that I picked up the Mizuno uh, Wave Rebellion Pro 1 at Christmas. Um, I was, came quite late to that shoe and I was surprised at how much I liked it. I found it a fantastic short distance shoe. I used it for a few 5Ks and it just felt really quick and snappy. Um, the Wave Rebellion Pro 2, it feels a lot better bigger on the feet um there's definitely a bit more foam in here and you really can tell that that, it, that there's a lot more um midsole in the shoe um you'll notice from the shoe that it has the way that it's designed the geometry of it you have got these cut out sections from the back and the front of the shoe and the bulk of the midsole sits in this middle section of the shoe so when um i'm a midfoot striker so i basically hit this shoe directly on the thickest part of the midsole and it does it works really well for me it feels like a trampoline um, and it is just so much padding in it and it pushes you onto your forefoot as soon as you do that um, so for my foot strike it just seems to work really well um, but what I would say is that it works best for the faster effort so when I'm doing interval sessions when I'm doing those 5k's because of the way that my foot's landing it, it it's really giving me a nice ticking over motion it feels very bouncy and it, I get the best out of the shoe for those runs. When I've used it for longer sessions, when I used it for the half marathon, I did a Hastings half marathon in it, what I found was that it, the course of that half marathon was very hilly. It was, uh, there was about 3K uphill, so the overall elevation of that race was about 250 metres probably one of the most difficult half marathons I've done. Um, so when I was running at slower paces uh, in that race, which I did do quite a few times because it's quite a tough course, I found that the midsole and that trampoline effect didn't work very well because I wasn't really positioning my foot in a way that I was benefiting from it. It was basically just hitting the trampoline midsole section and just pushing me back up, but it wasn't rolling me forward because I was running too slowly and I wasn't landing in the right part for it. 
when I picked up the pace, and there are there were some really long downhills in that race, it just my foot just went straight forwards, and it felt really really quick. It was um, very hard not to run fast on the downhills in this shoe because of the geometry of it. Um, so what I would say is that. Um, based on the midfoot strike and Nick um, is a heel striker so he'll explain what it's like for a, a heel striker but for me running at a fast pace this is a really really fun and interesting shoe to wear and I, I love going out and, and doing a fast session in this shoe slow sessions I, I don't enjoy wearing this shoe it just feels like it's um, the bounce is just dulling the effect it's basically just popping me up every time I'm running but not really giving me any sort of motion forwards um, but when I do speed up a bit it really tips me over and I start to really get the benefits um, of this shoe. I do find it to be a very comfortable shoe to wear it's definitely it's fun as soon as you put it on you start to feel the fun of it it just feels very bouncy. Um, if I was to compare it with other shoes out there like the Alfly 3 um, or something or the Vaporfly 3 it's not a very natural feeling shoe so i think it is a very specific shoe to certain type of a certain type of runner and i think a lot of people won't get on with this shoe um based on the geometry of it and that and that feeling of the shoe but if you are one of those people that lands on the midfoot and you uh your running style really prompts you to to move forward into that forward motion it's a really nice fun shoe to wear um but i definitely the half marathon i'd say is the limit for this shoe i definitely wouldn't go marathon for it because i think as I get more tired in the marathon or um, the pay, the way that I run later stages of a marathon, I think this shoe would not help in any way uh, at that point. It's not a very natural feeling shoe that really smooths you over. Um, it's just a shoe that really works for those faster efforts. I'd also say that it's not as stable as the original uh, Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 1, which wasn't a massively stable show, shoe either, but because of the extra midsole um, stack in this, it does feel like it's a little bit more wobbly. So you do have to be careful with this shoe. Uh, especially because you've got the um, instability of these back and front sections, um, but also because of the stack as well. So it's it's a bit of a, a wobbly shoe. Um, so uh, only use on really flat, uh, comfortable terrain. Uh, the outsole is really good. I've had no issues at all with uh, grip on this, and I've I've been running in it quite a lot on uh, wet roads and elevation and and things like that. Uh, so I found it to be really good, and it's held, holding up really well um, based on those seventy. There's 70k I've done so far. So pretty impressed so far with the outsole on this shoe. So a bit of an undercooked run test for me with the Mazzino Wave Rebellion Pro 2. I've only actually done one full run in it and I've had a couple of aborted runs. So the reason for this basically is I find it quite a risky shoe and at the moment I'm deep in a marathon training. I'm in good shape, heading towards London. And after that run in the shoe, I did a track session. I just felt slightly odd on the base of my foot on my plantar fascia on my left side in particular. Just felt a little bit risky. I will come back to this and get some more testing in after London Marathon and you know for my main job where I have to write a full review by myself, but I thought I could chip in some thoughts here alongside Tom's more extensive testing. So the run I did was a track session where I was doing 20 laps of the track without any rest, alternating 90 seconds and 80 seconds per lap. So I ended up running 8K at around my target marathon pace on average overall. And it is, you know, an outlandish shoe, much like the original. The bounce is huge. It's very much like a pogo stick almost under the foot. When you hit that sweet spot right in the midfoot, it is a very bouncy shoe. You've got to really almost land in the right spot to get that directed forward as well, though. You do have a really nice rocker on the shoe to move you forward and, you know, control that bounce into forward momentum. But, you know, you've got to hit the right spot on the shoe to really get the most out of it I would say. So actually with my foot strike on my right foot I think I am pretty much right on the sweet spot there at the back of the midfoot and then in my left foot I probably land a little bit further back so I can feel it's a slight adjustment a bit more on my left side to actually run in the shoe well because if you're not it basically it forces you into that position so if you're not running already in that position you have to kind of adjust to get the most out of the shoe. I think it's probably the same if you're an extreme four foot striker you might not actually get that much from the rock on the shoe because you'll be missing that sweet spot a little bit. When you do hit that sweet spot though, you do get pushed forward with a big explosive bouncy feeling. You know, it's incredibly fun to run in and it is very bouncy, but it is quite unnatural, even for a super shoe. In the world of unnatural super shoes, this is one of the weirder ones. And actually, by the end of even just that first run, you know, it does feel a bit laboured perhaps because you're not necessarily running in your natural style. I think to unlock the best of the shoe, it has to fit perfectly with your gait or you're going to be very strong in your lower body and run in it enough to adjust to it and get used to the muscles that are going to be used because it will make you run in a certain way. And when you are, it does feel great, but when you're not, you know, like I said, it can be a bit but even at the end of just that track session. So I felt that a bit more almost with this shoe than the Wave Rebellion Pro 1, which I really did enjoy a lot. And maybe, I don't know, I was just in a different stage of training and I was doing more short runs and it felt like I was able to fit with that shoe a bit better. With this shoe, even over that one run and those couple of short aborted runs, it did feel like I was being pushed to run in a slightly different way. You know, I'm not going to say it's a risky shoe or it's a dangerous shoe or anything like that, but I did not like how my legs felt, my plantars felt after that one run. Something I didn't actually have with the original and 
maybe I've just got an abundance of caution right now with marathon training, but I think there is an element of that here. I wouldn't necessarily put this shoe down as a long distance running shoe for lots of people, just because it is a slightly different shoe to most, and you've got to take that into account. <laughs> So my verdict on the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2, I love this shoe. I think it's a great fun shoe for up to half marathon distance, but I think it's a niche shoe that's specific to a certain type of runner. Because I land on the exact part of this shoe that is meant to be landed on and, and push you forward, I seem to get the best out of the shoe and I really enjoy running in it uh, up to about half marathon distance because I think one when you're not using the shoe in the right way or you're maybe not landing it in the way that it's designed to you're not going to get the benefits out of it and you might actually really not like this shoe um because of the way it rides it's not a very natural feeling shoe it doesn't uh, it definitely feels weird when you when you put it on um and for me i quite like that feeling but i don't think everyone would like that feeling just because um it it doesn't necessarily uh, feel like it would work for every foot strike. 5K, 10K, it's definitely a fun fast shoe that you really um, promotes a really exciting um, forward motion that just makes you run really fast. If you're going over, if you're going a bit slower and you're using a slightly different foot strike, I think it just doesn't have the benefits that you would get from that. So if you could compare it with other shoes out there like the uh, Alpha Fly 3, Vaporfly 3, uh, Socony Dorfin Pro 4, uh, it's a very much a different feeling shoe from all of those. Those shoes are fast, they um, are responsive, uh, some of them have a bit of bounce in them, but they, they are relatively natural um, for a lot of runners. This isn't, so um, it's definitely one worth trying on if you want to give it a go because it's a bit of a risky shoe to get if you're not quite sure if it works for you. So my verdict on the Wave Brilliant Pro uh, 2 is obviously a bit stilted. I've not done enough running really to give you a full verdict here. I will say it's a different shoe and very fun to run in. And if you're hitting the right sweet spot on that rocker, you are going to get a very fast ride. And it is comfortable and protective, but it is different. And it's like I say, if you're not hitting the sweet spot all the way through your run, it might start to feel a little bit laboured at times and it might not feel the most easy shoe to keep getting a good pace out of. So there are lots of carbon shoes where I think that isn't true. They have a bit more of a natural feel. And the moment, the best carbon shoes on the market for me are the Asics Matter Speed Sky Paris, maybe the Edge Paris, we haven't tested that, and the Nike Alpha Fly 3. I think those are incredible shoes, going to deliver just as much speed as the Mizuno, but they have a slightly more natural feel. I think they're going to be more in tune with the majority of running styles. And yeah, they work really well. And I think they're probably less of a gamble if you haven't tried the Mizuno. Now, if you do have the gate to suit the Mizuno and you are hitting that sweet spot very naturally, and it doesn't really adjust your gait at all to do so you are going to get a terrific racing shoe here and a really fun shoe to do lots of running in even in that situation i'm not sure it necessarily be a shoe for the full marathon for some people just because it, it is a bit different as you start to tire at the end of the marathon and you change your form up a bit you might not get the best out of the shoes just like the first one this continues to be a very fun shoe i look forward to getting into it again after london marathon hopefully all my fears will be allayed and i was actually just being a bit over cautious but for now i am being cautious and that is something obviously that is a slight negative with the shoe that i think if you are going to be cautious it is not the most uh, risk-free shoe of all the carbon shoes out there because of the you know, very different design you have here. Like I say though, it's not a definitive verdict for me. I do apologize for that, for the lack of testing here, but I will be back into the shoe uh, after the London Marathon uh, when I feel a bit more comfortable using it. That's it from us on this review of the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the little bell and check the channel for all the other videos we've got coming up. Also, if you're going to catch them below, you can find a link to our podcast, which comes out a couple of times each month. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time. Thank you.